because the damages caused by Jadi satu isu yang We were locked down for 84 days Never thought of using it SPP ni ialah protection But I think very immediate and very obvious We are basically now number one in Malaysia Itu adalah satu kisah yang terjadi dengan pandemik yang COVID-19 ni Human beings are most creative during a crisis for decades, we've seen that all inventions came from the world wars, including the inventions of digital computer, radar, and so on. Today, COVID-19 also will be the driving force behind science and technology. Today, we are going to discuss on the impact of COVID-19 on the technology and science in Malaysia. Joining me is our COO of MTech, Dato Ng Wan Ping, CEO of TimeTech, Mr. Tae Hon Singh, and Director of Business Development of Keeper Pay, Mr. Ricky Liu. During this lockdown, there's a lot of change of behaviour. Hmm. Now, what is your observation of this change of behaviour? The online and offline. Hmm. If we imagine, uh, hmm. if let's say for the past 40 years, if let's say the pand pandemic happens in the 80s, uh, 40 years ago, hmm. I think the only communications tool that you can communicate with the outside world is the landline telephone. Yes. Yes. You have nothing else. Yes. You can't do anything, you can't work from home. I think that the entire economy has to be shut down. Yes. Okay, you can't go shopping online. Now... And probably you, a lot of people will die of starvation. Yeah, yes. yeah yes. But, but now you see that it's a, you can do almost everything. Mm. Okay, you can work from home, you can shop from home, you can uh, socialize uh, from home with your friends, everything, almost everything you can do. But, but I think human being, I, I, even though at that time we didn't have the, the mobile phone, you have landline, but I think we'll be creative enough to find ways. For instance, you start to even build your own thing, you grow your own thing mm. during this time. I believe, let's say it happened 10, 20 years ago, mm. we would have done something. Mm. Maybe we don't have the technology like today, mm. but we'll be using the technology of the day to do it. For e-wallet, uh, is there any changes uh, in the, during this lockdown? Uh, yeah, uh, the, of course, the pattern of uh, using it, you know, and the frequency of using it, and do you have to do something else to actually adapt to this new situation? I, I, think, I think, yeah, so, so for us, it was a, a, a lot of room for us to innovate during mm. the, the lockdown. Mm. Uh, when, we first, when we first went into lockdown, uh, we first know about it, I think, earlier in uh, late February, uh, because we were also doing the um, the thermal sensor solutions uh, for KLIA. So we were actually working. Well, a lot of team is working. Uh. So when the wallet uh, uh, proposition came in, a lot of people have this this fear of touching physical cash. Mm. So adoption of wallet went up. Mm. So we saw a surge in the usage, mm. um, and then also uh, more from the business owner side. Uh. First, the first, I think a lot of them realized that. Um, I, I can't go and deposit the cash, uh, it's, it's a risk. Mm. So why not I start accepting payment in, in, mm. in, uh, in the form of wallet. Mm. So we had a search in, in, the, in the whole merchant acquisition part. Mm. So a lot of people sign up mm. Mm. Yeah, during mm. the whole MCO. Mm. What about Hansing, your, your business? Uh, you know, in, yeah, we, yeah, I think that we are uh, quite lucky because uh, we have, uh, because all the while uh, uh, we are doing uh, biometrics products mm. plus the uh, for the past eight years, we developed uh, uh, the cloud solutions. We can see that uh, that's a scenario change for this uh, working environment. Mm. So nowadays, that's uh, what we call that uh, sporadic uh, attendance is uh, a new norm, mm. a new reality. Mm. That means that uh, the office becomes uh, what we call that uh, optional, mm. no longer uh, mm. a must uh, mm. to a lot of this. Uh, uh, working uh, class. Mm. So that means that's uh, how you clock in because uh, you still have to report to work. Even mm. you work from home, what time it starts from work? Because at the payroll at the end, mm. that means that they have to record. Uh, most of the payrolls, they want to link to the time attendance uh, to have a proof that uh, you are actually uh, report to work, mm. off duties, all these things. So so the only thing that uh, we do is to enhance our, 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 our product like uh, to add on uh, some of the modules uh, during the lockdowns, we inno innovate by uh, adding the, the, the health screening module mm. for both of our, uh, what we call the, 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 the wisdom management and the time attendance because that's the body temperatures uh, reading is one of the SOP from the government. Mm. And the second thing is the, our hardware products 
uh, face recognition becomes uh, more popular. So, like the, we need to enhance our products uh, to integrate with the software, and uh, the face recognition has to be able to read the mask face uh, detections. Uh, from MDEC observations as a whole, how much has this COVID nineteen uh, accelerate the adoptions of digital economy in Malaysia? Mm. In the past, people may know, mm. but they they choose a way and see attitude because life is still quite okay, yeah. I can wait. But uh, during this time, we see the, the urgency. Yeah. Even the, the, to the do compel it. to do it, even the very micro uh, companies that we never thought they would. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who come forward. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result of that, we thought that it is important because a lot of people, they may be interested, mm -hmm. but they do not know how and where. Mm -hmm. So that's where uh, we, we start to, to build around uh, the, the support system mm -hmm. to help the people to, to adopt. Now, this one, uh, Hong Sen talked about his tool. So I realized that at, 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 during this MCO, what's important is to provide people the tools, allow them to work remotely. Uh, that's why we, we brought in this um, uh, the e-commerce. You know that we have been driving e-commerce yes, for right. years, but that become even uh, more pertinent now. Mm. Uh, and there's no other channels. There's no other channel. Thing. There's no channels. But yeah. then we realize that it's actually not difficult. Yes. Within a day, yes. you can actually set up an online store <laughs> and start doing business. Yes. But before that, people may think it's so difficult. Yes. I may have to invest a lot of money, times, and effort. But you realize that it's not actually that difficult. Yes, the price is so amazing. They force within you to a day, do it. It's a the new skill. Yeah, the situation <laughs> forces us to, to, to do it. I have also have very interesting uh, data to, to share because I was just reading it a few days ago. Um, uh, because we track the e-commerce, mm. and this is not just Malaysia, this is the entire ASEAN. You know that we have about 650 million mm. population. Mm. So the, the prediction was by the year 2025, the, the, online, the people that will be going online will be 310 million. Mm. You know what, this year alone is 310 million oh. already. So we are hit by five years. Mm. And mm. Malaysia is one of the, I think, uh, highest in terms of the, 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 the acceleration. Yeah, yeah. We are actually concerned about this cloud storage. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, from uh, you know, in the perspective of industry player, you know, how yeah. do we address this concern? I think during MCO, we interviewed a few people uh, of corporates. Uh, and it turns out, even though staff can work from home, but certain access requires uh, secure VPN. You need to be logged in to the uh, office Wi-Fi to have access and all these things. So that, that made them you know, to relook into the whole infrastructure, how they run the business. Mm. Right? Uh, it's good that last time you, you allow only secure access. So for example, uh, for many managing directors, uh, they have personal assistants, they have their, their, their right-hand man. Right? Now I'm working from home. They got no access to the secure server. Right? Yes. And, and not many people is ready with VPN. So I think the proposition right now is a lot of people are looking at the whole uh, cloud uh, facility to see how they can actually migrate their, their physical uh, storage all the way to cloud. Uh, so it becomes more accessible. And I think about uh, of cloud is that it's a lot of uh, misconception about cloud is not safe. I would like to say that actually it's not true. If you are working with a reputable cloud service provider, it's safer than your on-premise yeah. device because they, for their reputation also, they have to make sure that they are, the data is secure, the services is secure. Right. On-premise is actually not that secure yes. because anybody yes. can come in and switch on and then yeah, take yeah, the yeah, take yeah, data yeah. away. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it to me is a wrong perception. Yeah, correct. Yes. It, it, it's correct because uh, we have been uh, dealing with clouds uh, for the past eight years. Of course, uh, we see that a lot of these uh, bosses, their mindset is uh, they will feel that I need to own. Yeah. The ownership is important. Yeah. They feel like it's more secure when I see the servers. Yes, my own thing is rather than people's people thing. Yeah. 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 That is uh, one thing. But uh, now we can see that uh, slowly the mindset is changed. It's because that's uh, cloud, in fact, uh, we, we take an example uh, like see this uh, a lot of people they say that if my whole office uh, get burned down, mm. how they want the disaster recovery centers? Mm. But uh, that is so costly if yeah. that is on premise uh, system. Yeah. But on the cloud, uh, it's easy to deploy the data with the so much cost they can save. Yeah, mm. but looking at the most simplistic solution, right? Things that that bother a lot of business people is during MCO. Uh, the simple thing as signing an agreement. Yep. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that 
that really, you know, gives a lot of people a lot of headache uh, because uh, what can I do now? I can't travel, I, I, it takes a lot of time for me to do it. So that's why we hear a lot of talk on EKYC yes. um, during this whole MCO period, right? How for the first time. How we can automate <laughs> so many things, yes, right? right? So so I think uh, uh, one of the first things we roll out is the uh, partnership to do a digital signature, yeah. right? Uh, where, where you no longer have to physically uh, have the document present with you. So that makes a lot of sense for, for a lot of businesses out there. Yes. I just send document across and it's legally binding. Right, and you can just uh, uh, sign and have your contract uh, executed with a uh, stamping mm. um, within uh, one hour or less than that, uh, within uh, 20 minutes. Mm. So that that a lot of learning curve uh, for a lot of business owners, mm. and I think the adoption rate will, will continue to go up uh, for simple cloud services. Interesting. Yeah. Actually, most of the services are not available. Solutions are there. Yeah. Just yeah. people yeah. never thought of using yes. it. Yeah. Never resort to digital. Like, yeah. A lot of people has never heard of uh, Zooms, uh, Google's, uh, Meet, all these things. They know Google, but they don't know Google. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, you know, what is the role of the government to move the whole countries toward digitalization, especially in the post-pandemic uh, period? I think there are a few things. Uh. From government point of view, right, you, we need to make this a conducive environment. And our regulations, and especially regulations, I would say policy, like, policy is what you drive people to do, right? Your regulations should support, take for example, we talked about cloud just now, but there are still some, some reservation in terms of oh, certain services cannot go on cloud. That will actually hinder. So the, sometimes, the, especially the, 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 the private sector may feel that uh, if it's not acceptable, then I will probably don't do it. Uh, so so, so the, the, to, to provide clarity is really important. The other one is about talent. Because talent is key. If you want to drive this one, you need to have people who know how to use and how to implement. And you don't have enough people who know how to digitalize, then it will slow down the adoption as well. So these are the things that I believe uh, government can do. Sec uh, the, the third one is about money. So obviously, if you ask me, I don't think everything should be paid by government. Mm. You will agree with me. But we are also we need to also be aware that there are certain group of society they may not be as well versed than the, the larger company. They know what to do, but there will be one segment of the society or one segment of businesses they may not know how to, and they may not have the means to. So that is where I think government can come in to help to catalyze, maybe give some initial support to help them to grow. Ultimately, I think the result should speak for itself. Uh, in the past, when you had to buy everything and own everything, obviously it costs a lot. But today, if really you want to go online, I think you just yeah. you mentioned a company, maybe I shouldn't be promoting companies, so I wouldn't say that. They have a package, let's say you sign up, it's about a thousand or less than two thousand a year. You have access to a few solutions. Mm. And that is very affordable for many people. And mm. today they are matching grant given by government. You want you know about that? There's a SME digitalization yeah. grant mm. that MDEC uh, is working together with Bank Sakala National SME Bank. And we help to identify the technology solution. The other the two banks will help with the the the, the, the disbursement of the money. Because we have larger grant as well. That is a the small automation grant for services company that we can support up to 200,000. That is for people who really want to do something bigger to transform their business using technology. There are many other things. So, so people shouldn't think that you need a lot of money to kickstart. But you have to be ready to put commitment and investment to do it. Yeah, and then the, the boss Yes. It's very important. You cannot say that it's IT's job. It's not. It's a business decision. Yes, yes. 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 I agree, sir, 100% from the point of uh, uh, that point of from the government. Yes. But from the point of view from uh, Raya, from a business, uh, we, we, we know that uh, uh, our trend is uh, definitely is, uh, in line with the globals because that digital transformation is a global, global trend. Okay? In Malaysia, so we cannot avoid saying that so we don't want to go digitalize. This is a global trend. But when we look into the how government, yes, there is the urge. Yeah? Okay, so says so that digital transformation. When we really look into the governments, uh, how they implement, how they execute, you can see that uh, government as a role model. But so when we go to the government, we can see that they're still using the punch clock, they're still using the notes uh, to register uh, uh, the visitors, still a lot of things, even for the SME grant. Let me complain a bit. <laughs> okay, even though there is a SOP by saying that how many days, uh, uh, what we got that is how many days the approvals or the vetrues, uh, all these things, yeah, it's very clear. 
but the when the in the actual the, you can see that the, no uh, when they say that takes 14 days mm -hmm. but the, in fact that the two months uh, no replies uh, yeah. from the from the government. Yeah, efficiency is the government yeah, should yeah, be yeah. upgraded that is, uh, yeah. that is the, that is if, the if i may jump in so, so if this is like a yeah, yeah, your defense so, so yeah. I, I think i think in a way uh, uh, for for many people they are doing it for the first time because we are combining the effort from government and also the private sector so the initial uh, the the plan is that when we identify technology service provider mm. we are looking at the technology service service provider to be the like uh, our channel partner to help the SME because they are, they are end user, end user, the, the businesses. Yeah. We look at the technology service provider as our partner to help those people. Mm. So today, we, 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 after receiving feedback, we are actually suggesting and it's accepted already by the, by the committee that the technology service provider will be the one to help to submit the claim. So the, the end user don't have to worry about it because they do not know how to. Sometimes it's, you, you, I think you have to understand how, how government system work, right? If let's say you need to have ten documents and you only give nine, yeah. they just can't process. It's yes. not that they don't want to process. I think that you will agree with me, right? Yeah. So it's like because it's a lot of a governance and you have to follow. So so after you understand the, the, the rationale behind it, and we the good thing is that all of us are in this together and wanting to help. I found that sometimes it's uh, also our fault in the system. For example, as you mentioned just now, ten documents are required, but only nine are submitted. Mm. Actually, at this point of time, there should be a, a response from the uh, government side. Mm. Uh, give them a, a reminder, look, you are short of one document. Yes. Please submit it within the next few days before we can proceed. Mm. Uh, so let them feel that if we are actually helping them. Yes, uh, I agree. So sometimes they, they, there is mis uh, miscommunication because they thought they had submitted everything mm. and we know that they have not. Mm. So the things just stay there without moving. I think that part needs to be improved. Agree. So that's why that's why we, we need to change it so that you be, you can have faster uh, response so yes. that people know that something is happening and that it's not like. Yeah, I think I think not, the, not, the not private working. sector need to do their part as well mm. I think the government can only do so much. But my only comment on the government effort is that I think more need to be put in for the awareness and education. Mm. Uh, we we approach a lot of merchants. So let's say during RMCO or uh, during MCO, right? Uh, came across the Adil Fitri Ramadan period. Mm -hmm. uh, so so um, during that part, we have a few thousand merchants that wants to come on board mm. uh, uh, because they have their Ramadan Bazaar business. So yes. one of the big challenges is that they went to the government sector, city councils and all that. So there were a lot of confusion because of what's going on. Uh, and I think there's a, a lot of synergy and, and knowledge sharing needs to happen on the government level uh, to make sure it trickles down to even the city councils, they know what to do. Uh, so on the private sector side, what we did was we, we, we do our part by creating a, a knowledge sharing platform. Mm. So to allow forums, uh, merchants to come in, then we help them to sign up. Like, it's a lot of effort. I, I, I really feel the pain coming from MDAP side. There's a lot of yeah. <laughs> many, many, many processes, but uh, we, we try to help as much as possible. But, but I think I'm very happy to say that uh, uh, we came out of the struggle. Uh. So certain state, uh, certain state governments and, and Free Selangor and the city councils and all that, they came up with uh, new processes to really allow uh, the fast onboarding of, of merchants. Since you're on it, can you give us some examples of uh, companies or corporations which have benefited from the adoptions uh, of technology? fully utilize it and then benefit directly, especially during this uh, MCU and RMCU period. So, so let's say, give you an example of uh, um, uh, the Ramadan Bazaar period, yeah. now, right? So we had this effort to, to onboard in Klang Valley. So we worked closely with the GPPP KKM, the Gabungan uh, Punjaja. And at the same time, we also work with logistic partners. Mm -hmm. So one of the logistic partners we work with is actually Lala Move, mm -hmm. right, to come in. Uh, and during that time, uh, there was two things that's happening. Uh, trying to support the government. Uh, one is to make sure businesses uh, can still do some business during this festive season. Mm -hmm. Number two is also to address the unemployment of youth. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, so there were a lot of uh, programs uh, happening that we, we tried to help facilitate, which is number one, um, the, on the hiring of uh, youth to come in as riders and also people who are unemployed, they can sign up on the program to become riders. So so there's, there's the recruitment process and how we can digitize the whole process. You can sign up, then we, we pass the leads to the operators 
and the operators get on and recruit them. Uh, there's also the part on the merchant side where we also help submission uh, for documents. Uh, we also compile. So we did a lot of uh, uh, engagement with MDEX side to also make sure uh, some of the, the merchants, they when they upgrade the solution to port, new port system, digital port system and all that, uh, they get to apply for the grant as well. Mm -hmm. right? So for example, one of our customers, like the eyes uh, where is a specialist, focus point, they have 180 uh, the outlets, okay. So the boss that uh, they have problem like uh, 180 is uh, outlets uh, how you know that uh, your outlets area of your outlets opens on times mm. okay mm. so for the past uh, when you do the clockings okay i i, I do the clockings mm. my data is not real times mm. and don't receive any notifications mm. but because of the clouds mm. that means that uh, for the boss mm. okay for the business they can easily okay they can set even a supervisor i can set that if I in charge of these five outlets, okay? Mm. If any one of them, uh, mm. the workers not uh, mm. uh, clocking uh, at let's say it's at 9 uh, 30, mm. they're supposed to do some preparations. I can set 9 30 notifications, I will receive the notification. That can be done. In the past, you can't. You know that some for some big uh, shopping malls, uh, if you don't uh, open on times, once you see, everybody's open, you are not open, okay? You might get the uh, fines from the management, okay? So they save a lot of uh, problem. I still can uh, call up, okay, what's happening. I can send uh, replacements. All this uh, can be done by using uh, cloud solutions. Yeah, I think yeah, there's, yes. a, there's a clear difference between uh, uh, having a digital strategy and, and planning for digital transformation. Uh, I think a lot of companies realise that now. Uh, the pandemic has, has, has created a situation whereby you cannot be present at your office, you cannot operate physically and you have to operate remotely. So how can you prepare for that? There's this term before pandemic, people say future-proof. I want my solution to be future-proof, my business to be future-proof. Right now, it has to be pandemic-proof. Mm. Right? Because if MCO happens again, that goes along, along uh, uh, for a lot of retailers. Uh. So when, when, when retailers were allowed to start businesses, right, uh, we went in to help shopping malls to, to put in the thermal scanners and all that. But, but there's always a concern from retailers. Uh, what if, what if the, the cases spike again, then I cannot open my shop again? Should I retain my employees? Should I, you know, uh, uh, hire more? Or should I, you know, scale down? So that's why you see a lot of retailing, uh, retailer shops uh, close down. Then uh, there's always this this education part that needs to happen. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, think you didn't yeah. ask the right question. Yeah. It's not about should I close down or should yeah. I retrench. You should like it, the question should be: This is my business. I'm selling product A. Yeah. Now, if I have, I, if I cannot have this shop open, how do I sell this? Where will be, where my customer is? How do yeah. I deliver it to them? Yeah. And look at solutions that can answer those questions rather than ask, asking should I close shop or should yeah. I open yeah. shop? Yeah. The question should be uh, how can I change? How can I make a comeback? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that uh, Malaysia is doing uh, uh, from my point of view uh, I can foresee that it's doing uh, pretty well. Mm. If I uh, come from my own company I can say that uh, mm. okay it's so, it was my overseas uh, uh, business uh, get affected, okay? But I can see that uh, Malaysia's uh, business uh, even uh, better than uh, before the MCO. Oh, okay. There is a uh, compensation for the uh, for the declinings of the overseas business. I think, uh, very interestingly enough, uh, you know, this whole MCO thing, RMCO thing, closed out uh, the whole entire tourism industry. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. So no foreign tourists come in. There's a lot, there were a lot of businesses that is 100% reliant on local businesses. But we see a lot of Malaysian businesses evolve. Mm -hmm. They change. They get creative. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, it's, well, I wouldn't say it's a good thing that came out of pandemic. But but at least at least right now we see a lot of innovation happening to how to do homegrown tourism. Yeah, yeah. You see a lot more local, hyper-local businesses flourishing. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. I think we, we, we have great. I think we, yeah. we've been through a lot. I think we, we are hanging yeah. on. Really yeah. chutty chutty Malaysia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From government agency's perspective, what do you think? Uh, what is your take about the recovery of the economy? I think we are on the way of uh, coming back. I think other things like production, the manufacturing side, we can do a lot more. Mm -hmm and uh, agriculture. Mm. So we had to start looking at sectors that we can uh, do more to create um, 
maybe jobs to, to help to generate uh, income or even export. Uh, today we are driving a lot of export and looking for market that we can do. So through let's say e-commerce, you can do a lot of cross-border export. And when your export is doing well, your production can do well as well. So I think this, these are all the areas we have to, to start uh, uh, to, to put more effort. And if we all work together, and good thing about Malaysia is, like you say, is uh, the way how we manage the pandemic, uh, and 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 the people knows about it. We are talking to investors a lot, and some of them, especially in the services side, say that hey, actually Malaysia is a good place for them to put their operation in in so that uh, because we uh, number one our people are more disciplined mm -hmm. and then our infrastructure is good enough to support mm -hmm. this one i'm talking about global business services gbs mm -hmm. and we actually see jobs being created by all these uh, foreign investors fdi are expanding in malaysia so we need to start going out and talk about malaysia's advantages mm -hmm. so that you know mm -hmm. uh, more bring more opportunity to malaysia mm -hmm. when it comes to science and technology pandemic is like an engine pushing both forward during the lockdown, government has introduced several packages to help the SME to digitalize. Let's just have a look. Sistem yang diperkenalkan ini dijangka akan mempertingkatkan lagi kecekapan urus takbir tengah kerja. Technology is a key factor behind the development of civilization's economy. Today, in Malaysia, we need ideas to create opportunities, to turn the tide, to create opportunity during this crisis. With that, I would like to thank our three esteemed guests for your insights and your presence today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.